Okay, here's another look at muscles. You should have already gone over the videos that give you an idea about how muscles contract using actin and myosin and the role of calcium ions and everything as well too. So here's another way to look at it and we're gonna actually talk about how this works in insects as well too, but the concepts are still the same. So you should be able to name the joints and parts uh, when you see a muscle joint that looks like this, especially the names of these two muscles. This is the elbow. So see if you can figure that out. Uh, you already know the word is antagonistic, which means that these muscles are working opposite to each other. So muscles can only do their work by contracting. When they extend, it's just relaxing, but really what's happening is an opposite muscle, the antagonistic pair of that muscle is actually uh, doing the work to bring it back, basically. So any kind of muscle that you are looking at on your body has an antagonistic pair that's going to be able to do the opposite movements. So let's take a look at some of these things right here. So muscles, you already know, they provide movement by exerting force when contracting. So only when they actually contract. So when these biceps contract, you're actually going to bend this joint. When your triceps contract, this is going to relax, but it's gonna cause this joint to straighten out. So muscles provide movement by exerting force only when contracting. They can only cause the movement in one direction. That makes sense, because if this is pulling this way, then you're actually only going to get muscles that are flexing this one direction. You should have watched the other videos that talk about the difference between kind of a, what is it, like a elbow joint and then something like the, the shoulder, which is a ball and socket. If I'm doing karate moves, then I'm using, you know, my hip joint that can do like Roundhouse 360 kicks. I was really awesome at that stuff when I was a kid. So you need these antagonistic muscles to be able to exert opposite forces for the opposite movement. So again, same thing that I said right here. Biceps are going to do one thing. Triceps are going to do the other. This diagram you should be really familiar with. There's no requirement for you to be able to name uh, every type of bone in the body or different types of muscles or like the pectoralis major or the gluteus maximus. Amazing names for kids, I'm thinking about that. Tendons are basically the type of material, the connective tissue that are attaching the muscle to the bones. So in a diagram here, you should be able to identify that these are the tendons over here. That's what this little labeling line is supposed to refer to right there. And let's see here, bones and exoskeletons provide anchorage for muscles. So for us, we have an internal skeleton for most, not most, I think for lots of animals that you look at at the zoo, they have internal skeletons. So their muscles are working the same way that ours do. But that's not to ignore all those organisms that actually have exoskeletons, like this little cricket down here. They also have muscles, but the muscles are just on the inside of their exoskeleton. But same thing, they just use their antagonistic muscles to do movements in opposite directions. And instead of using the bones for leverage, they're using their exoskeletons for the actual leverage. So. Our muscles are attached to our bones and it pulls these bones back, backwards and forwards. Uh, for things with exoskeletons, the muscles just pull their exoskeleton shell backwards and forwards to get the movement. So these bones or exoskeletons act as levers to help to change the size and direction of the force. So I already mentioned this, muscles are attached to the inside of exoskeletons and the outside of bones. So for us, our muscles are on the outside of our bones. For these guys, the muscles are attached on the inside of the exoskeleton. So here's kind of a, a diagram of what that might look like in a cricket's um, leg. They have these joints, same thing that we have, that flex or extend using antagonistic muscles. They have extensors or flexors. So this is the femur or the thigh. This right here, in this case, the biceps are the flexor muscle, which will flex this joint and bend it. The triceps are the extensor muscles, which will straighten this out when this contracts. So not too hard to understand. So obviously, when this crazy massive muscle of a hind leg in this particular insect extends out, it's going to be able to jump. So here are some quick labels. They've got these tendons, same thing. The muscles are attached to the exoskeleton. You have the here the exoskeleton of the femur, which is a fancy way to say the hind leg. Our femur is our big thigh bone 
inside there. So here you have the extensor muscle, here you have the exoskeleton of the tibia, which is the smaller bones, we have our a tibia as well too, and the flexor muscle. So in this case, you can see that the extensor muscle is the one that really provides the contracting force to cause um, this little bug, this little cricket to be able to jump so high, right? Here's a close-up look at that, fancy, very beautiful, um, by N.W. Beeson. Congratulations on drawing this awesome diagram of a cricket leg. You don't need to know these extra parts here. I think femur and tibia, that's it. Right here, this is the part that straightens. So this extensor muscle, when this contracts, it's going to straighten it out. So if this comes up as an application type question, you should know that the extensor muscle straightens out the joint. Same thing for us in my elbow joint, my extensor muscle, the triceps, when they uh, contract, it's going to cause my joint basically to unravel. So very good for a, I don't know, side punch. I don't really use, do that action very much. I haven't done many side punches. But I do flex this one a lot, the one that bends the elbow. That's what you do when you're showing off your guns, right? You flex like that and everybody looks. But the trick is, actually this is totally unrelated, the trick to really strong looking arms and guns for you boys and girls out there who are really going for strong guns is to really work out the extensor muscle. You got to work out this one because this is what looks like big arms. This is two thirds of the arm width for Arnold Schwarzenegger type guns. I don't know if he still has those or not. Do you guys know who that guy is? Oh. Anyways, work out those muscles.